All right, welcome to the Robert Show. Super excited to be here at uh, Airbyte's headquarters with one and only Michelle, who's the CEO and co-founder of Airbyte. Super excited to chat with you, Michelle, today, and I'm excited because you all made a huge announcement yesterday about uh, Airbyte 1.0, and uh, we all have been waiting for it. We've been seeing all the cool updates uh, slowly and steadily, but in the last four years, you all have worked so much in the data integration space. You all have done so much for the community. So kind of excited to you know chat a little about what can we expect from 1.0, how will it be helpful for the larger community. I know you all do so many meetups as well here at the Airbyte office and um, yeah, I would love to chat a little about you know what have you been listening from the community, but the big news, 1.0 launch. Yeah, great to have you here and Thank great you. to show you this, uh, this space and the beautiful view that we have. Love it. It's, uh, it's definitely a big, a big milestone for Airbyte. Uh, so we've been really prepping. I think the the past three and a half, four years have been around like, how do we get to like this this particular launch? I mean, right. there is still a lot that we want to do in the future, but for us, it's a huge milestone. It's a, it's really the, I don't know, the huge accomplishment from like both the team, the community, and, uh, and also, of course, our customers. Awesome, uh, and you know, obviously, I'm pretty sure the audience would love to also get into, you know, the bits of what can we expect uh, since you all have made such great uh, announcement yesterday. So I'm kind of uh, interested to know about what pivotal moment shaped Airbyte's journey to the 1.0 launch. Do you have anything that you would like to share with yeah. the audience? Now, there are definitely a few that I can still very vividly remember. I would say the, the first one was in the summer of 2021. Mm. Uh, that's really when we started to have that hockey stick in terms of community adoption. Right. And I remember the, the, the pain of the team of how oh, you have like all this traction, so many people using Airbyte. Right. And the team was what, 10 people at the time? Wow. And we were just struggling under like, oh, so many requests for like connectors for like, PR reviews and things like that. So mm. to me, that was the first big milestone of Airbyte. And the, the second one was the moment we, we released Cloud. Uh, so it happened in three different phases. Right. But for us, releasing Cloud was not just about pushing a project and mm. letting people figure it out. It was very much about us being the the key expert, not just in terms of the development, the software development of Airbyte, but also yeah. in, in its operations and how do you operate at scale. And cloud was for us like this other milestone. And finally, I would say, uh, oh, actually two other, maybe when we release the connector builder, because you know, yeah. one of the things that is very key for Airbyte is about how do we address the long tail? How do we make the platform super flexible easy to use yet extremely powerful. And the connector builder that we released in 2023 was a big deal because suddenly building connectors became like we removed the burden of the building and maintenance. And yeah, and here we here today, 1.0, huge milestone. Uh, yes. We've been working really hard to get there. And we've seen all the hard work coming together, obviously from a community standpoint as well. We've seen you all doing so much in it took like four years to get here. So that's a lot uh, for sure. And I'm, uh, you know, obviously you all have been catering to such large enterprises out there as well. So which is uh, definitely hats off to the team, all the hard work that you all have put together. I'm kind of also curious to know a little about how the community influenced, you know, the features, because I know for Airbyte community kind of plays a very important role. You all have always kept it that way where community first, we would love to get the feedback and, you know, obviously, it's open source community and I know open source is very close to your heart as well, always. So would love to know a little about that. Yeah. So especially like even more at the beginning, we everything we developed, we developed it with someone from the community that needed something. Right. So that's really how, how we started. I think along the year we've become a little bit more intentional about where we're focusing, but still like we take a lot of inbound feedback from the community around like reliability in terms of like how to get started fast like mm. how do we manage resources so all of those are signals that we take into account into the product development uh, 
like the place where we are trying to involve the community more and more, and this is something we are uh, launching with uh, with Airbyte 1.0. It's called what we call Marketplace. Mm. It's basically a fully integrated experience for building and maintaining connectors. So before you would have to clone the repo, you would have to hack a little bit of Python, you would have to just push it with the PR, wait for someone at Airbyte to review it. Mm. Today you can do it directly from the connector builder where you can just create your connector or like fork an existing one, edit it, push it to GitHub and boom, it's done. So that's one way where we got the feedback from the community that nice. it was already a good experience compared to what exists in the market. We just made it even simpler and better. It's so. more, yeah, the openness as well for exactly. the community, which kind of gives them the opportunity that they don't have to wait. They can go out and, you know, obviously get exactly. the ball rolling. So uh, those are fantastic things. Also kind of curious to know a little about, you know, how does the 1.0 launch kind of differentiates you? What does it, how does it set you apart? Yeah, you know, for the past four years, we've had every single year, we had one document that we wrote about what should 1.0 be? Mm. Uh, and every year we said, no, we're not going to do it this year. There is all these things that we need to, uh, to do. For me, the key, like, we were really waiting for like, very important signals. The first one was how easy you can get started with your bite. Mm. That was really the, the key piece. And, you know, with ABCTL, like re revamping the, the quick start and just getting to like medium workload on Airbyte by default was a, a key piece. The second one was very much about um, um, like the, the flexibility of the system because you start with something, you get successful with a platform, how do you extend your use cases? How right. do you get it to more scales? And the third one was very much about reliability because it's a p key piece of data infrastructure you want your pipes to always work. Yes, and exactly. And that was very much like the, the key effort that we put in. And that was the thing where along the year, we wanted these three criteria to mm. be true before we go to 1.0. Love it. No, I think uh, you've kind of made a very important point. And just on this piece itself, I have like a follow-up question around, you mentioned about reliability. So how sp what specific improvements ensure data pipeline reliability in 1.0? Do you want to share a little about that? Yeah. So the... Building data pipelines is really hard. I exactly. think the audience will know it very much. <laughs> <laughs> All the data engineers, they can re yeah, relate so much, yeah. And the reason is simple, is that you depend on systems that you don't control. Hmm. So you're basically creating pipes between systems, whether like where the data is being stored, like the source or the destination, and you don't control this, this system. If you're pulling data from an API, this API is gonna change. You c there is nothing you can do. You cannot influence the roadmap of this other company. Right, right. And when we talk about reliability, there is a part which is, if things should work, then they should always work. But the other part of, of reliability is more around like, the resilience of the platform and telling mm. you when something goes wrong because things will go wrong. There is no, there is nothing around that. Like, you know, you, you can look at it as pipes are just roads. Sometimes you will have an accident on the road. Some, sometimes you will have like uh, traffic. Yep. You, there is nothing you can do against that. Yep. That's just the reality of things. But for us as a platform, it's just, it's not about making sure that there is no accident or making sure that there is no traffic. It's just that if it happens, you have a way to remediate it. Yes. And that's was very much what we pushed on. And you know that it's happening. So you're not just blinded and suddenly there is no data or like it's the wrong data or just, yeah. like we want it to be like the, the guardian of the quality. I love it. I love how you kind of mentioned about, you know, obviously there have to have incidents and that's why reliability comes into the picture and uh, that will happen for sure, but you should have something in place to make sure where you're kind of fixing it yeah. at, the, at that moment itself. Also curious to know... Like, maybe, maybe just one yeah. thing about things that we've done as well is we've completely revamped the internals of the Airbyte data plane, for example, mm. where... Now you can have one control plane and multiple data plane running across multiple uh, mm. uh, cloud or multiple Kubernetes cluster. And this is something that we've used for ourselves for cloud, which is how do we make sure that if there is an outage on the data center, if there is not enough 
ability to scale, we can very quickly open up a new cluster and just have all the jobs running there so that there is never an interruption in, in data movement. And those are like the kind of fundamental changes that we've made so yeah. that it always works. Yeah, no, I think uh, those are fantastic insights. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Misha. Also kind of curious to know a little about, you know, the Gen AI. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that piece has been, you know, I've, I've been like, I chat with you, so I know obviously that a few things that you work on or uh, not exactly, but would love to know a little about, you know, Gen AI piece, how, how, how does that Gen AI workflows and, you know, structured data and vector databases uh, support in the 1.0. Uh, yeah. So that's something big announcement that you all have made and you all have worked on it like for for almost more than a year now. Yeah. So, yeah. So what we saw very, very quickly with Airbyte uh, was we, we've been very, we've been working a lot with um, um, like structured data. That's mm. what goes into warehouses. The thing is, Last year, when we started to have all that crazy um, like improvement on Gen AI, suddenly you realize that you can now automate the processing also of unstructured data. And mm -hmm. you can figure out a way also to make it more structured without having like an army of people being on the screen and labeling data or just extracting data manually. Now you can automate that. And for us at Airbyte, being a data movement platform, that's something that we saw as a very as a key piece of what we want the platform to be able to do. And so we focused a lot on giving more access to unstructured data sources, uh, also pushing that data into places where it can be leveraged. And here we talked about vector databases. Mm. The other piece that we've noticed was the audience for Gen AI is a little bit different. So they, like now we're not only talking to people who are just creating these data pipelines, feeding data into uh, data warehouses, but we're also working a lot more with uh, like application developers mm. because everyone is building an AI application somewhere, whether it's a chatbot, whether it's like, uh, like unstructured data processing, et cetera, et cetera. And we've been working closely with them, and that's something we released as a beta product earlier this year, which we call Pyrebyte, that's now... Um, available and maintain and everything. Yes. It's really about how can we get the pipe as close as possible to the code? Because mm. we want to make sure we can address these data needs that yes. people who are building application also have. Right. And that's to me a big, a big step up on how we are approaching that, uh, that new world. Yeah, no, I love it. And uh, obviously it, it is very important for the data engineers out there as well to, you know, get that piece, uh, that's like the gap they sometimes kind of feel. So you're kind of uh, fulfilling that as well. So that's awesome. Switching gears a little bit here in terms of, you know, obviously something about the future. So I know you all have been working in the data integration space and you have been doing fantastic. So what's, what, like, how do you see the future of data integration post 1.0? Yeah, so. Until 1.0, a huge focus on the analytics use case. Right. That was very much where we saw all the success and like all the, the community traction. Right. Post 1.0, we're going to focus, continue to focus on data movement, but we're going to take a, an approach that is more geared toward um, mm. like production, uh, not production, but uh, operational use cases. Mm. So how do you connect live systems together? Mm. And that will go with more streaming capabilities. That will come with more reverse ETL capabilities. So very much not just pulling the data into a lake house or like a, a store or, like or, or data warehouse, but really pushing it into different applications. Mm. And that's going to be a pretty big deal for us with a complete different dimension around what reliability means, what latency means, what throughput means. So very cool stuff coming in. Wow, I love it. Because that's one challenge as well that I hear from a lot of enterprise leaders and we all have been seeing, you know, that get it to production, right? So, and at the same time, you all are kind of, you know, making sure that, okay, this is the next level of data integration that you might see. So I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, also curious to know what are your immediate priorities after the launch of 1.0? Like, it's already done, but what are your uh, priorities and what will, 2.0 look like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
immediate priorities. So one thing that we've announced was the, um, the launch of Airbyte Enterprise. So, mm. you know, among our community, we have a lot of Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies exactly. that have been asking for more from, the, from open source. And that's something we started to serve a year ago mm. to them. And this next half of the year is very much focused on going to the V1.5 of it. Uh, nice. So what additional connectors need to exist, what governance feature needs to exist, et cetera, et cetera, and just bundle that into, into Airbyte. So that's the immediate priority. We're doing also something on AI. Uh, mm. We'll hear about it. Uh, but those are the two, yeah, more like short-term priority. Model on the future side, it's really holistically thinking about operational systems. So making data flow faster, mm -hmm. um, getting the streaming use cases, getting a river, like pushing data into APIs rather than just a store or a data warehouse or something. Mm. So it's, it's very much giving more power to your data. Yeah, no, I love it. Uh, you know, and y'all, it has always been where, you know, everybody kind of takes it, it takes your time, you kind of get like the community feedback and then, you know, obviously start working on it, but then are always at the, have that innovation in mind and keep that in mind. I'm kind of also waiting for the AI piece that y'all are working. I'm pretty sure that's going to come out very soon. So looking forward to that. One last question for you, Michelle. If people want to learn more about the journey, I know there's a blog about, you know, the 1.0, your journey till now. Uh, and I'm going to share that with our audience. But anything else, where can they reach out to learn more about Airbyte? If they want to reach out, what place is good? Is LinkedIn a good place? Or yeah, I mean... Obviously, start with the website. That's yep. always where you will get most of the information. To join the, the community, we have a pretty active one. It's on our Slack. Mm. And the link yep. is also on the website. But that's, to me, the best way to start Starting getting to know, to know Airbyte and to also be part of that community. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Michelle. This was, uh, you know, 1.0. And I'm super excited to see... Uh, the road to 1.5 and then 2. <laughs> so thanks once again for doing this and uh, congratulations on 1.0 launch. Thank you, Ravit. Such a pleasure. Thank you.